Hello, welcome back to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to be continuing with our environment project with this video. So here's what we have so far with our project. We have our first chandelier that we spent a good bit of time working on. And then I'll have our second smaller chandelier down here. I did go ahead and take the liberty of applying a mental ray uh, glass material to those little crystal things. So it does have that transparent look to it. And then we have our door piece like this that we're going to duplicate for the rest of the room. And this is our end cap of the room so far. So I thought we'd go ahead and work on this uh, interior here for the rest of the room. So let me open up uh, Photoshop and we can check out what that's supposed to look like. So here in Photoshop, I can zoom in on my reference picture here, and you see we have these doors over here with these kind of arch uh, patterns here on either side. And then here in the middle, we have what appears to be a mirror, which you can see it mirrors the chandeliers, and you can see that infinite mirror effect since it's the same on both sides. Just have a hall of mirrors going all the way down into infinity. <laughs> so... With that in mind, okay, so looking at this, I do have columns here. You can see them going up and down here that are kind of dividing this area into thirds. And when I compare them to the column I have here and the kind of wall piece, it's very much the same as this kind of wall piece I have. So I'm going to just duplicate that detail over to create the other pieces that we have. So let's go back to Maya here. So this that I have here in the wall, we can just kind of duplicate to use in the rest of the piece that we have. Just going to duplicate these. I'm going to hit Shift P, which removes them from the group that they're in currently, and then Control G to make a new group, and then move it out here. And then I'll duplicate it again to get a second one. So I'm going to select both of these and press up to select both of the groups and just kind of maneuver these. Now I don't have, I haven't been really working on uh, to scale so to speak, so my opening here is not quite as wide as it probably needs to be. But what I can do is either widen the room, which shouldn't, shouldn't be that hard, or I can make these columns thinner, but I think I just widen the room. So what's going to be involved in that is to select all of this stuff. First, let me get rid of this. I should delete that for now. Select all of this, okay? And I'm going to go into component mode and have all these vertices select to select. Select all of these vertices. And I'm just going to move it over and kind of widen this room out. And then I can grab this column that we have and see how much space I really want for the door over here. And go back to our image and kind of eye the space that we have. So it looks like this column should be approximately right here. And again, I'm not being super exact about it. Just duplicate this. move that over. So again, we're going to, I'm not going to be too exact about this right now, we're going to create one of these sides, the doors, and then duplicate it over to the other side. And then once we've made one and we have the duplicate where it's supposed to go, we can uh, change this side of the room to fit whatever that's going to be. Alright, so back to Photoshop real quick. Let me look at my uh, wider view and I can zoom in and kind of see what's happening over here. So again, these wall pieces are just the same height as the other pieces. They have the same kind of base down here as well. So back into Maya, I can do a similar kind of thing. I'll just grab, actually let's grab this one since it's not been stretched out and stuff. Control D, I'm going to shift P again to remove it from the group that it was in. So I can press it and press up. And you see it does not go to a group. If I click this one and press up, 
it, it is a part of this group here. But because I hit Shift P, which is remove from parent or unparent, it is no longer in that group. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, and we'll use this with our columns. Might need to make it a little bit wider. Actually, no, we're actually okay. It's, it pretty much is right, sitting right there on top of it, about the same uh, width. And it's going to match the side of the wall over here. Whoops. So what I'm going to do is move this over here. So it's going to have like a uh, piece right here. That's looking at this right here. See how it's see how it's right there with the door frame. So this is that piece that I'm working on right here. Just kind of sticking that into this area, and it's going. It does. You'll see poke over the division here between the uh, column that we have and the door. So it's going to position that right here, and then duplicate that and move it over here, and position it with this column, and then hit Shift D, and so that's the same equal distance spacing, so we know that this column actually needs to be moved over. So I'm going to select its group and get it positioned like so. Actually, what I should have done, if I want to maintain my spacing, let me undo all that. All right, so I'm going to take this piece, once I have it here, Shift-D to duplicate it, and I'll position it so that it is square with this column. Shift-D again, so now we have equal distance spacing here, and then Shift-D again. So now our spacing is equal with all four, and we can use that as our guide for where the wall is supposed to be. So all those pieces I selected before, I'm going to grab these again, deselect my new piece right there, go back to component mode and grab all those vertices, and then we can move them so that we have the same, it looks the same on this side as it does over here. So we have it right there. We have it right there. So that should be the distance that we need. And so now this column needs to move over. So I'll grab that group. Move it over there to be flush with our base. And because we made more space through here, we can actually grab this little square here and make another uh, row of these little cubes to fill in the space that we have here. And it's not quite exact. So what I might do is delete all of these and just kind of start finish the rest of the row using the new cube spacing that we have. So delete all that stuff. Fill that in like that. Okay. So now that's all filled back in. We have equal spacing between our columns. So now we know what we're going to be working with. Okay. And these bases are sticking way back here, but they're going to be going through the wall, and we're not really going to see any of that. So let's go back to our image. We have our baseboard, it's going to go across. Then we have these arch shapes, and then we, this has the mirror, and these will have the doors. So I think I might do the mirror first, it might be a little bit easier. And a lot of these details are actually painted onto the walls, they're not actually sticking out. But we might make them stick out just because it would be cooler. And then we have also have these little light sconce things. And if you notice, they're very similar to the small chandelier we have here. So we can probably duplicate pieces from this chandelier to make this sconce that's on the wall. 
but we'll get there eventually. All right, so let's go ahead and extend these baseboards through, and we'll add in this uh, arch shape. So I have a baseboard over here. You can duplicate it. Rotate it 90 degrees. And we're probably going to need to change this eventually. But but for now, I'm just going to grab this and just pull it all the way across. And we're going to cut into it where the doors are going to be, need to be. It's going to need to be closer to this, I think. All right. So we have this going across. So we'll cut these holes in when we have the doors in place. Let's go to Create, Polygon Primitives Pipe, into the Options. I'm going to reset tool here, get all these back to their default values, and then I'm just going to shift click right here to make a basic pipe primitive. Rotate it 90 degrees this way, and then we can scale it up like this. So this is the start of our arch. Let's go ahead and increase our subdivisions by quite a bit, about 60 looks like. We can adjust our thickness value. So thickness should be approximately. That looks about about right. And then the radius. It should be pretty much flush with the columns. Let's go to our. Just kind of center this, adjust the radius. We can look back at our image real quick. So we do have some space between the columns, so it's flush with this section, the very bottom of the column right through here. So with that in mind, let's just move it down there and adjust that, be like so. We can move it back up. So this arch, let's see, it should go pretty much, if you're kind of using the uh, column as a guide, it pretty much goes to the top of this section right there. So pretty much right up to there. And then we can cut this in half. Grab these edge loops. And just go to Edit Mesh Extrude. and pull it all the way down. All right, so we can grab these two edges here. Actually, there's... Okay, so this will go down and cut across through here, and we have a frame for the mirror. So we can kind of move this up a little bit. And then I'll use... Then I'll use mesh tools to pin the polygon Click from here to here. So with this, we'll hit enter and we'll fill in that gap. Press the Y key to redo the appended polygon tool. Fill in this gap here. And we can bring this down. And then move this back. Okay, I can give it my signature bevel, edit mesh, bevel, maybe give it a segment, let's do the outer edge as well. Okay, so now we can, for the mirror surface, it's pretty much just a flat plane, of course. But we do have a frame. Let's look at that. 
So the frame is relatively simple. I mean, it's far, it's blurry. I can't really tell any exact details. Also, our arch looks like it has a kind of border frame to it as well. So you add that in. All right, let's go back to this. And instead of that bevel, then let me undo that. We can. I'm going to actually delete the backside faces of this thing. Go to wireframe, select all these faces, and delete them. Okay. We can select all of these. Edit mesh, extrude. Extrude again, we're going this way. And extrude again, and we can go back into the wall. So this will be that frame. We can double click these two edge loops, edit mesh, bevel. So now we have that frame. Okay. And this is actually going to be duplicated for the other, you can see that they all have the same kind of arch. Also, you can see here, there is a little bit of space between the border of that arch and the column. Right now we're kind of flush, so I'm going to scale that in a little bit. So more like that. Grab these vertices and pull them down. Okay. I'll control D and duplicate that and bring it over here. So we want it to be in the same relative position. Okay. Something like this. Okay. And then this frame obviously does not have the crossbar at the bottom. So for this one, we can delete, keep hitting that wrong button. We can delete these faces. Grab these vertices and kind of point snap them down to be aligned with the others. And again, the baseboard here, we're going to go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, insert one right through here, and one right through here, delete those faces, then we can Double click these two edge loops, go to mesh, fill hole. Go ahead and grab those two faces. Edit mesh, bevel, give it some thickness. So there's our opening for the door. This will go across through here and then this will be the same way. Okay, we'll worry about that right now though. All right. So then for the frame for the mirror, I actually might just use what I have here. So instead of having this beveled edge through here, I'm going to select that edge loop, go to select, convert selection to faces, grow my selection out one, and then I'll go to edit mesh, extrude, I'm going to pull that out. Grab this edge, shift, double click this one, 
There we go. So grab that entire ring like that. Kind of scale it in like this. Alright, so we can double click these two edge loops and we just scale it in a little bit to give it the same kind of uh, thickness this way as well as the other way. Okay, something like this. Edit mesh bevel that face, those edges I mean. So now we have this frame. And then we can double click this inner edge loop, go to mesh, fill hole. So this face right here will be our mirrored surface. Okay. So now I'll go to my right side view. I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to create polygon primitives plane. I'm just going to click and drag through here. Back to my perspective view. Let's move it into place. So it's going to be in the wall behind something like this. And just make sure that the mirrored surface is in front of the wall. So you can see right now the wall is going through it. Push that back. So it's, so it's like this. So the plane is behind the mirror. And we can actually just extend this plane going this direction to fill in the same gap that was going to be behind our doors. It looks like we're a little flush with this wall. back a little bit. Okay, so this one has the frame for the mirror and this one does not. Let's pull this forward some. So this one is looking at the trailer X, this number, and this one's this number. So I want them to be the same. Copy that number, paste it here, hit enter. So now it's the same uh, distance in the X axis. Okay. So for the door, we'll continue this Next, in the next part, we'll work on the door that's going to fit in this section here, and then we'll duplicate it over for this side. If we go back to our image. So again, once we have that, the door looks like it has this vent through here. We can touch on that. This right here is a painted image. It's not actually a uh, 
a relief, what they call it, like a, a carved image. But we might do something a little more interesting. We'll see if we have time. And then we have the door down here. So, yeah, getting to the end is pretty relatively simple uh, construction for this stuff compared to the chandelier that we've already done, of course. All right. We're filling in that gap. So, uh, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer. And I'll talk to you later.